some real technical problems. Hopefully those problems have now been ironed out and we're looking forward to being with you throughout the rest of the school year. During the next few weeks we are going to be focusing on a special prayer form. Traditionally October has been known as the month of the Holy Rosary. And so during the next few weeks, we are going to be talking about the Holy Rosary. You can see that I have a big rosary here in front of me. It has been a prayer form that the church has used for several centuries. And on October 7th, the church actually celebrates the feast of the Holy Rosary. How did this feast come into being? Well, the feast itself was established by Pope Pius V in 1571. It was originally called the Feast of Our Lady of Victory because there was a war and the battle was won and the uh, soldiers believed that it was their intercession to Mary that made them victorious. In 1573, Pope Gregory the 13th changed the name of the feast from Our Lady of Victory to the Feast of the Holy Rosary. And in the 1800s, Pope Leo the 13th dedicated October to the Holy Rosary. In 1969, Pope Paul VI changed the name from the Feast of the Holy Rosary to the Feast of Our Lady of the Holy Rosary. How did this prayer form actually get started? Tradition says that St. Dominic first brought it into use, but we're not positive about that. But let's take a look at where the church was at in the Middle Ages. Now, St. Dominic lived in the 1200s. What was the church like at that time? Well, the only people who could really read and write, generally speaking, were the monks who lived in the monasteries. And they spent their day regularly coming to the chapel and praying what is called the Liturgy of the Hours, or the Divine Office. And the heart of the praying of the Liturgy of the Hours is the recitation of the Psalms. So you can see from my old prayer book that they had actually two Psalms and a canticle during the main um, hours of the Liturgy of the Hours. They had a scripture reading. They had either the Canticle of Zechariah or the Canticle of Mary. They had concluding prayers. And they regularly came to their chapel and prayed these prayers several times a day. They also spent time during the day reading the Holy Bible and reflecting on the sacred scriptures, reflecting on the life of Jesus. And so they knew God's word very well. Now the common ordinary people were hard workers and they never learned to read or write and, and there was kind of a desire, there was a real desire to come close to God as the monks did. And so the rosary was developed. Why? because, well, I should say it was developed and the main part of it consisted of five decades. A decade being an Our Father and ten Hail Marys. 
And then the mysteries of the rosary were developed. We have the joyful, the sorrowful, and the glorious mysteries. And while you prayed, you were to meditate on the particular mystery of the rosary. Well, if you prayed the joyful mysteries, there were five of them, you would be praying 50 Hail Marys. And then if you pray the sorrowful mysteries and then the glorious mysteries, by going around the rosary three times, you would have prayed 150 Hail Marys. And that's in addition to this introductory part of the rosary. Why 150 Hail Marys? Because there are 150 Psalms in the Bible. And in terms of meditating, the mysteries of the rosary drew people to focus on a part of the life of Jesus as they prayed each of the mysteries. And so while not having the Bible in front of them, by focusing on that particular mystery, they really got in touch with the life of Jesus. I would have to say, growing up in the pre-Vatican Church, I didn't learn much about the Bible. I didn't open the Bible more than a couple of times in grade school. But by praying the rosary and meditating on the mysteries, I felt that I was deeply in touch with the life of Jesus. So during the next few weeks, we are going to look at these mysteries of the rosary and learn how they help us to understand Jesus and Mary just a little bit better. Hail Mary. 